It's good to see all of you today. It's um, cold outside. It's supposed to snow. Pheasant season ends on Tuesday, and there may be at least one more hunt in the in the future here. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to miss that part of it. Uh, I, I love this season. I love this time of year. Um, but that's not what I came to talk to you about today. I. Um, I, I want to talk to you a bit about this gospel lesson, and, and to get at it, though, I, I want to take you back a few years. Um, for me, and, and, and over the generations, it's changed what's been on television, but for me, when I was growing up, there was a show on called Captain Kangaroo. Does anybody remember Captain Kangaroo? Yes. You all remember the little jingle, bum, 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 you know that? Um, that, I, I just found out this morning, I didn't realize this, that lasted from 1955 before I was born till 1984, when I was uh, like in seminary. Um, then a few years after that, there came a guy by the name of Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, right? And uh, then bef I think somewhere in there, Sesame Street started and it is still going. And I still watch some of that with my grandkids. And uh, there's, a, there's another one called Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. You see where I'm going with this? There, there, there have been all these shows all through the years that have been geared towards kids. And, you know, I don't know about you, but Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, before I had kids of my own, always irritated me. Um, you know, this nice, soft voice, you know, hello, children. Uh, but then, I, you know, I, I had kids, and I guess I'd forgotten about Captain Kangaroo. I had kids, and I started watching it with them, watching Mr. Rogers. That became one of my favorite television shows. Because I would watch my kids, and they were like crazy glued onto this thing, just like I was with Captain Kangaroo, and just like my grandkids are with Mickey's Clubhouse and... Uh, and Sesame Street and whatever else they're watching these days. They're just absolutely glued. And you, you ask yourself why. And, and it, if, you, if you just sit with them for a while, you realize that what's happening is that these shows and these people, uh, Bob, Bob Ketchin was his, was his name, I believe. I think Kurt Kirschen, Captain Kangaroo, uh, Fred Rogers, the people that are behind Sesame Street and all these other things. Um, they look at the world like children, very different than the way we approach children. When we approach children, we have these relationships with kids, parent-child relationships, right? Or grandparent and chi grandchild relationship, which is a little bit more like what Mr. Rogers does. Um, or, but, but we have this sort of supervisory role. We have this protective role. Um, we, uh, we, we watch over them, we take care of them, we correct them. We are the parents, we are the adults, they are the children, and there's sort of like this, this sort of magic barrier between us and them. But not so with Mr. Rogers, and not so with Captain Kangaroo, and not so with all the others. They look at the world as children. They, they, they figure out what a child's language is, and they not only speak that language, they become children. It's authentic. It's real. And children know that instinctively, and they're drawn into it. Let's sing.
parents and children, adults and children, barriers between them. And, you know, I think today's lesson is the story of Jesus going to John the Baptist and being baptized and then the heavens are open and God approves of what's happening here. I think that's really what this story is about. It's about breaking barriers. Because, you know, you think about it, in the Old Testament, God's the parent, we're the children, right? And whether God intends it, and of course, that's a good thing because parents love their children. God loves his children very much. He doesn't want to be this, this distant, you know, larger-than-life thing that's out there that's so frightening and, and, and judgmental. But, you know, he calls himself Father, and we are his children, and, you know, things are kind of set. Whether that's what he intended or not, that's where it is, and he's supervising us. At least we feel that way sometimes think he sees it that way too and he's protecting us and he's caring for us don't do that you're going to get yourself in trouble don't do this you're going to get yourself in trouble you're going to hurt yourself you're going to hurt somebody else the ten commandments come along and we're off and running and there's like this barrier between god the father and us his children something like what we talked about last week right with the priest Jesus is the high priest. This goes even further, though, today. Because God sends Jesus into the world, and I think he does this purposefully, because he feels the barrier, and he wants it to go away. So what he does with Jesus, and don't get offended, is he sends Mr. Rogers. Okay? He sends Captain Kangaroo. That's what he's doing with Jesus, because I want you to notice, when Jesus has this sort of coming out party out at the Jordan River, where all of a sudden he's been 30 years, no one's really known who he is, he's just a regular guy like everyone else, he, you'll, you'll notice when, when that party takes place, Jesus, God does not send Jesus to Rome, to um, uh, the, the, the place where the emperor lives. He doesn't send him to the emperor's palace and say, look, I'm here. He doesn't even go to Jerusalem. He doesn't take him to the, send him to the temple, right, where you would expect a religious coming out party to take place, right? He goes out to the Jordan River. He goes out to John the Baptist. Now, I've never been there, but I'm told that the Jordan is this kind of muddy little stream that runs through the middle of Palestine, and there's not much out there. At least at the time, that was certainly the case. It was the wilderness. And John the Baptist was out there, and the people who went out there and followed him were people who felt like they were separated from God. They were the sick. They were the lonely. They were the hurting. They were people who were troubled with temptation. They were sinful, and they knew it. They maybe had trials and conflicts amongst their neighbors and with their families. They couldn't communicate with their children. And if they were children, they felt like they could never please their parents. And these are the kinds of people who leave Jerusalem and go out to the Jordan River to be baptized by John, hoping that their sins and all these things that they carried with them would be washed away. And I want you to notice, Jesus isn't going to Rome, and he isn't going to Jerusalem, and he isn't going to the shiny temple. He's going out there where the children are. And he meets them there. And he doesn't just learn to speak their language. He doesn't just learn to speak our language. He becomes one of us. You'll notice that there's a conversation between John and Jesus before Jesus is baptized, right? John says, well, I should be baptized, but you're too great. John recognizes who it is. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. It's got to be this way because there are bigger fish to fry than making me holy, much bigger fish. 
And what Jesus was referring to was reversing things. He says, it's not me who's, who's great. It's me who comes to be low. It's me who gets on my knees and starts crawling around the kitchen to see how cupboards look from a child's viewpoint and looking up at the giant refrigerator and around at a television that's up here someplace. I'm here to become one of you, Jesus says. And that's what he means when he says this is to fulfill all righteousness. He comes to break the barrier. He comes to touch us where we live in all those places that we do not mention to anyone else because they're deep and they're hurting and they are the places where we are lost and alone and that's where he comes. Let's sing. I want to tell you a story about a woman by the name of Laura. Laura is a 30-something. She has children and a husband. I think she's a nurse, and she writes children's books on the side. One of her children, a teenage son, has had this thing in his body, something wrong with his heart, for the longest of times, and the doctor said, let's just let it be. Maybe it'll never come up. Maybe it'll never be a problem. Guess what happened? It became a problem, which meant that her son had to have heart surgery up in Rochester. It was a nine and a half hour surgery. And they did not know what the outcome would be. This was not a trivial surgery, and it was not a slam dunk success. And they sat for nine and a half hours, and they waited. Her husband cruised out for a while and went down to the chapel at St. Mary's Hospital and came back and said, you know, I had, I had the most peaceful feeling there. Why don't you come with me? So they went back. They sat in one of the pews together. And she didn't feel the peace that he did. All she could think about was, what if this goes wrong? She felt so far from God. And she prayed. She said, just touch me, God. Help me feel that peace. The prayer was no sooner completed than she felt hand, a warm hand, touching her back. She looked over. It wasn't her husband. She looked in the other direction and up, and there was a woman standing beside her. She was wearing a green top and black shorts. And she looked at Laura with great purpose directly into her eyes and said, I will be praying for you. And then the woman went away. To this day, Laura does not know who this person was. She came, she went, disappeared back into the crowd at St. Mary's Hospital, came out of the crowd, disappeared. And she said, it was like God himself was touching me. And the peace came over me. And I knew that whatever happened, we would all be okay. 
And that's what Jesus does when he travels out to the Jordan River and he talks to John and he says, you know, it's got to be this way. It's not a ghost. It's not an ethereal moment. It is a real human with real hands and real feet reaching out and touching you. And it is God himself who breaks the barriers and makes the connection. And for that, we give him thanks and praise. Amen.